and can never have sight. Sound, haste, leave in mind, and journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. There's a signpost up ahead, next stop, Jake Steve's. Hi, 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 long haired freaky dude here. Thank you for watching a Bacon Jake production. And today I'm going to show you how to make a Cajun chicken and sausage filet gumbo that'll set any soul right. To start, we're going to deal with the meats. A traditional gumbo, Cajun especially, would have some sort of seafood in it, such as shrimp, crab, oysters, or just the daily catch. But I prefer a good old sausage and chicken gumbo myself. Now for the sausage, you're going to want about, uh, about a pound of whatever type you prefer. Andouille would be the traditional or you could use kielbasa or Polish, but I prefer a good old hot smoked sausage. For the chicken, you're going to want two to four pounds of any type of chicken you like. I prefer just using breasts, but some people will use thighs or a mixture of breasts, thighs, legs, wings. It's whatever you prefer. Now for the mirapoa, or the holy trinity of all Cajun and Creole dishes. This is pretty much a necessity for all the Cajun and Creole dishes. You're going to want about a cup of celery, a cup of peppers. You can mix it up. I like to use half a cup of red pepper, half a cup of green pepper. You can throw in a yellow pepper too if you like. Remember, the green pepper, they'll be the bitterest. The yellow pepper, they're going to be slightly mild with a fruity flavor. And then red's going to be the sweetest with a good fruity flavor. And then you're going to want two cups of onions. Again, you can mix up the type of onions you use. You can use yellow, you can use white, or you could use red. I prefer a cup of yellow onion, which is the mildest and most strongest onion because they have a lot of sulfur. That's what makes your eyes water. And a cup of white onion, which is slightly less mild than the yellow onion. You don't want to overpower your gumbo with onion. You can use red onion too, which is sweet and has a bit of a tangy flavor. And now, the ingredients for the roux. This is pretty much what makes gumbo gumbo, the roux. Typically a roux is made up of one half flour, one half fat, but today we're going to use one cup of all-purpose flour and half a cup of vegetable oil to make our roux. Please use vegetable oil. Okay. For the seasoning, you're going to want a few tablespoons, maybe two to four tablespoons or more, of your favorite Cajun seasoning. This is my secret Cajun seasoning, so you're going to have to find your own recipe. In the link below, I have Emerald Lagasse's Cajun seasoning, which is very good. You're going to want three bay leaves, a teaspoon of salt, and a fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper to go along with that. Now for the base of your gumbo, you're going to want nine to ten cups of chicken broth. You can make this yourself, or you can use cans. If you're using cans, that's about four and a half to five cans of chicken broth. For the thickener, We've got gumbo filet powder. Typically, you think of gumbo as having okra, but really that, that was only used in the summertime whenever okra was grown. In the wintertime, everyone would use filet powder to make their gumbo. And it is just as good, if not better, than okra. Okra leaves a slimy texture, which I don't really care for. This is ground sassafras root. It's another name for it. And then, finally, we have the garnish. You're going to want thing of green onions and a few sprigs of parsley. First you're going to want to dice your two cups of onions, your one cup of peppers, and your cup of celery. Now you're going to chop your chicken up into decent sized chunks, like this right here. And remember, if you're using bone-in chicken or skin-on chicken, feel free to use that to make your own chicken broth. It'll make your gumbo taste much, much better. Now you're going to put these chicken chunks into a bowl and put the bowl into a fridge until you're ready to use them. Now you're going to slice your pound of sausage or mixture of sausages as you choose into quarter inch slices. Put your pound of sausage into a bowl set that aside. Now you're going to bust out your trusty Dutch oven. You're going to squirt about a tablespoon of oil in there. You're going to put that over medium-high heat. You're just going to heat that oil up. When 
Whenever the oil's starting to crackle, you know it's time to pour in your sausage. And you're going to continually stir this until the sausage is well browned. It's going to look a little caramelized. That'll take about eight minutes. Once your sausage chunks are lightish brown to brick red, and you can see the fat is beginning to turn brown, looking a little burnt, but it's not, then you're going to want to remove it from the heat and put your sausage chunks in a clean bowl, keeping all the grease and yummy fat that's stuck to the bottom of the pan. Keep that there. Please put it in a clean bowl. Don't put it in the same bowl that you got the raw sausage out of. It's just unsanitary. Okay. Fish it out preferably with something that's slotted so that you can keep the grease in there. We're going to be cooking the chicken in this in just a moment. And once these sausage chunks have cooled down, don't be scared to sneak one into your mouth. Mm. You're going to want to return your heat to medium high. And then now, we're going to blacken our chicken. First, you want to liberally season all the chicken chunks with your selected Cajun seasoning. The best method of applying this is just mixing it in with your hands, okay? Season until all the chunks are liberally covered. Now you're going to pour your chicken chunks into the pot and let those simmer. Continuously stirring until they're dark brown to blackish looking on the outside. This will take about five to six minutes. Once your chicken chunks have acquired this darkish brown color and all the spices are starting to look black, then you're going to want to remove it from the heat. Allow that to cool down a bit. Then you're going to fish that into a bowl and pop it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. Again, keeping all the grease in the bottom of the pan. Now we're going to construct our dark brown roux. And this is arguably the hardest part of making gumbo. Because when making dark brown roux, there's much potential for messing up. It can quickly burn, and whenever you have a burnt roux, you have burnt gumbo. And that's not good. Be sure your veggies are on hand, too, by the way. So the first thing you're going to, going to do is bring the heat to medium on your pot of yummy leftover chicken chunks and grease. You're going to add the half cup of oil and your cup of all-purpose flour. And you're going to have to be at this pot continuously stirring for the next 20 to 25 minutes until it is the desired color. At this stage we have a white roux and it's going to be about the consistency of Play-Doh. It's going to look and feel very much like Play-Doh. This is going to be used in white sauces such as gravy, chowder, and potato soup. The reason it's solid like this is because the gluten and the flours have yet to break down and the oils have yet to mingle with the gluten. Over time this will happen and it will become a thick creamy sauce. Now at this stage you've got what we call a blonde roux. This is mainly used in stock based stews, soups and such. Now keep in mind that you would never have a white or a blonde Cajun roux because you can't simply make a white or a blonde roux with oil. These can only be made with butter. So you can have a Creole roux but you cannot have a Cajun roux. At this point we have a brown roux and it's going to have a very strong burnt nutty flavor and this is going to be used for more milder Cajun dishes and gumbo. Once your roux is dark brown in color almost looking like Alpo or milk chocolate and it smells smoky and hickory then you're going to want to immediately pour in your vegetables and cook those until they're translucent. This will take about five to six minutes. And be sure you pour those in the moment that turns dark brown because it can immediately burn after that. Then you're not going to have a good gumbo. If you mess up, it's always better to start again. Once your holy trinity becomes to look translucent, smaller in size, 
and wilted, you're going to want to add your sausage chunks. your salt, your cayenne, and your three bay leaves. And you're going to stir that and let it mix for about two minutes. Now that may not have seemed like a lot of seasoning, but you got to remember, a lot of the flavors and the spices will come from your blackened chicken. Now you're going to slowly add in all of your chicken stock. Stirring as you go along. Once you've poured in all your chicken stock, you're going to want to bring it to a boil. Then you're going to reduce to medium high heat and let simmer without a lid for about one hour. Once an hour has elapsed, you're going to add in your chicken chunks and you're going to let simmer for another hour and a half. Once your gumbo is thick, yummy, and mm, delicious, then you're going to want to take it off the heat, cut up about a cup's worth of green onions, and about two tablespoons worth of parsley. Now you're going to add about half of your parsley, half of your green onions, and about half a tablespoon of filet powder. You're going to mix that in, and you're going to let your gumbo set on the lowest heat setting until you're ready to serve. Serve your gumbo over cooked white rice. Allow your guests to garnish with parsley and green onions as they desire. And it's not too uncommon in a southern household to find filet powder alongside the salt and pepper shakers as well because it is a good flavoring. Now typically gumbo will be served as an entree rather than a side. And when it's an entree, it is not usually served with anything else other than buttered French bread or a corn muffin and iced tea. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Bacon Jake. I'm Long Haired Freaky Dude. Thank you for watching.